Recreation. Hey, good evening and welcome to the June 23rd <laughs> meeting of the Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll forego the usual comments at the moment because up first we do have executive session scheduled for 6 p.m. Uh, under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, meeting with Town Council to uh, relating to appeals 61-20, Echo Land Development, LLC, Zero Percival Road, Lot 4 and T-Ticket, A, discussion of uh, the 6-9 Counselors Conference and uh, vote on mediation and application number 50-20M, Village at Brick Kiln, LLC, 511 Brick Kiln Road in West Falmouth, uh, pre-conference settlement discussions and potential continuation of Counselors Conference and a vote on mediation. Uh, so first, as the chair making the determination that uh, if the board were to discuss these items in open session, it would have detrimental effect on the board's litigating or negotiating position. Uh, so therefore, I will make the motion that we enter into executive session and vote uh, also with that vote to return into public session at the close of executive session. Second. All right, so motion made by myself, second by James Morse. Roll call vote to go into executive session. Jerry Patamas, aye. James Morse, aye. TJ Hurry, aye. Scott Peterson, aye. Suzanne Murphy, aye. All right, passes unanimously, so we will be going into executive session. it right the first time. All right, good evening and welcome to the June 23rd meeting uh, of the Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, calling the meeting to order once again and ask everyone to please silence their cell phones. I'll introduce the board starting at my far right, your far left is Jerry Patamas who is associate member. Uh, to his left is James Morse who is a full voting member. My name is TJ Hurry, I'm the chair of the board. To my left is Scott Peterson who is a newly appointed full voting member. And to his left is Suzanne Murphy, uh, who is new to the board. It's her first meeting, uh, and she is a full voting member as well. Also with us tonight is Noreen Stockman, who is the zoning administrator, and Ashley DeMello, who is the recording secretary for the night. The Zoning Board of Appeals is charged with applying the zoning bylaws for the town, and we consider requests for special permits, variances, and appeals as provided in the bylaws, which have been approved by town meeting and the Attorney General's Office for the Commonwealth. All decisions the board makes are made through the public hearing process. The board's goal is to hear testimony from the applicant, from the public, and also to allow a full and fair discussion of the project prior to rendering a decision. To begin each hearing, the clerk will read the public announcement of the hearing and then present any pertinent information from the file, such as referrals from town departments and summarizing correspondences to the board. The applicant or the applicant's representative will then have 15 minutes to make a presentation and time may be extended by vote of the board. The board will then question the applicant and the public will be invited to comment as well. Public comments should be directed only at the project itself. We ask you to please refrain from making any personal or derogatory statements. Public comment can include an opinion in favor, in opposition, or it might just simply be a question about the nature of the project. The chair will limit discussion in the interest of time in the event that comments become repetitive. All members of the public wishing to speak should wait to be recognized by the chair and once you are recognized, we ask you to come to the podium to your left. Uh, we ask you to also please state your name and address for the record. Public comment is limited to two minutes per person. And while you are up, up behind the podium, we ask you to re remain behind the podium, speak clearly into the microphone. 
the microphone behind the podium and the microphones here in front of us, they are not meant for amplification within this room. They are meant for the benefit of those watching at home on FCTV. Uh, the board will then either close or continue a hearing when the board is satisfied that enough information has been presented by testimony and in the file to make a decision by motion and vote of the board, the hearing will be closed. In the alternative, the board may then continue the hearing to a future date and time certain. After the hearing is closed, no more testimony may be taken. And as for board discussions and decisions, the board may then further discuss a project among ourselves and a motion to deny or approve would be made and voted upon. The motion will include a sum summary of key findings and conditions. An affirmative vote of four members, which is a supermajority, is required for approvals of motions on special permits, variances, and appeals. A split vote, such as a three to two vote, would be a failure to carry and would result in denial of the project. Under Massachusetts general law, if a special permit is denied, the applicant cannot return to the board for two years unless the project is substantially different. So turning to our agenda for the night, uh, we did meet in executive session at six o'clock to discuss application 61-20 Echo Land Development LLC and uh, application 50-20M Village at Park Hill LLC. Uh, but for now at 6.30, we do have public comment followed by one continuation, three new hearings, and we do have a few items on our open meeting agenda. So up first at 6.30 is public comment. This public comment period is meant for anything that is not on the agenda. Uh, so if you're waiting to provide comment on something uh, regarding an application tonight, uh, just wait for the appropriate time in the evening. So is there anyone here with any public comment on something that is not on the agenda? All right, seeing none. We do have up first the continuation of application 13-22, Sacchetti. Trustee, 461 Central Ave in East Falmouth. So Mr. Chairman, we've had two pieces of correspondence since the last uh, hearing on this. Uh, there's an email to Ashley DeMello dated uh, Friday, June 17th. Uh, please be advised that Richard Sacchietti is authorized to represent the Sacchietti Family Trust in all matters relating to any and all town applications, permits, and hearings. Uh, second email from the same day, we are working with the Conservation Commission on permitting work at the above address. Work is ongoing but not completed. Therefore, request is being made for a continuance of our hearing next week. Signed, Karen and Richard Sacchietti. All right, so they are looking for a continuation then? Yes. All right, would anyone like to make that motion then? Uh, we're proposing August 11th for a continuation. So Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue the hearing uh, to August 11th, 2022. All right, motion was made by James. Is there a second? Second. Second by Scott, and uh, this, was, this has not been opened yet, right? Yes, it was. It was open, it yes. Was. Okay, so oh. we may require somebody to exercise the Mullen rule. We may we have a change in the board. So. Yep. Has Jerry been here for a while? Yes. You have. All right. So voting members. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I have. Right. In fact, I supplied the Mullen rule on this one. There were three. There were three different okay, ones. Double check. Yep. All yeah. right. So for now, the voting members are myself, James Morris, Scott Peterson, and Jerry, and uh, Suzanne. If no, not now, but if uh, if you want to catch up via the Mullen rule, oh, okay. feel okay. free. Mr. Patamis's Mullen rule is in the file. Very good. All right. So the motion to do continue to August 11th was made by James. Is there a second? Second. Second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So that passes. Point of clarification. Sure. Can, or she wouldn't be a member if she went back and reviewed the Mullen rule before she was a member. Uh, that's an interesting point. That's a good question. I don't think that's I can. an interesting I point. Can. Well, at least there's four of us. So yeah, okay. That's yeah. Right. I don't think I can. You find out for me. Figuring out all the intricacies of that rule as, <laughs> as we go along. All right, so up next, new hearings. We have application 40-22, Edent, 129 Jericho Path in Falmouth, requesting a special permit to demolish a portion of the existing non-conforming dwelling <coughs> and construct a two-story addition exceeding 20% lot coverage by structures. To being all persons deemed affected by the Board of Appeals under Section 11 of Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws, you are hereby notified that application 40-22 Christopher J. and John H. Iden, 4 Fargo Drive, Ledyard, Connecticut, applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-10.1c 
3 and 240-11.3A4, formerly section 243C and 24069E, the code of Falmouth to demolish a portion of the existing non-conforming dwelling and construct a two-story addition exceeding 20% lot coverage by structures on subject property known as 129 Jericho Path, Falmouth, Massachusetts. For referrals, correspondence between the Conservation Commission agent Response to the wastewater superintendent. What is all? We don't need to snort them as you. Concerning what the definition of office or bedroom is. Com. The proposed work is located within a flood zone AE. The applicant will need to file an RDA with the Conservation Department. Engineering. Application is reviewed for impacts uh, to public right of ways and public utilities. Jericho Pass is a public right of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any changes within the right of way would require a filing a permit with the engineering division. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project may not direct any stormwater runoff to public property, abutters, or public rights of way. Dry wells are proposed for the roof as well as typically recommended. Uh, number five, while the site is small and the home is close to abutting properties, we recommend that erosion and sediment controls are included for the project to protect the town's downstream stormwater system and abutting properties. We recommend that plans be revised to include a demarcated limit of work and include proposed erosion and sediment <coughs> controls. We recommend the following condition be included in any approval. Construction of this project shall follow the town's soil erosion and sediment control standard conditions document which can be found on the engineering division's page the town's website. Reference to the Department of Public Works Engineering Division shall be replaced with the Zoning Board of Appeals who would then be the permitting authority for this project. Health Department, this property is on town sewer. See comments from Wastewater Division. Fire Department has no comments or issues. Assessors, no comment. Planning, no comment. Wastewater, hello Ashley. It looks like the plan is to increase from two bedrooms to five, master bedroom plus four other bedrooms, not including the loft. Any increase to more than four bedrooms in a single family residential lot under 40,000 square feet in a sewer area require a flow neutral bylaw variance from the select board. My apologies for taking so long, Attorney Moynihan. I didn't realize I was going to be clerking this evening. <laughs> Job well done, James. All right. <laughs> Attorney Moynihan. For the record, I'm Laura Moynihan, a Falmouth attorney representing uh, the applicants who are here this evening as well. Uh, this is a special permit application for 129 Jericho Path, and this is the uh, property here in the middle of the GIS map in downtown Falmouth, just to give you a sense of the neighborhood. This is the existing home. It's a small home built about 1948. Uh, it has two bedrooms and one bathroom. It has a second floor attic loft space currently serviced by the Little Pond sewer system. The lot is about 7,000 square feet, zone residential C. And the existing lot coverage by structure is 13.7%. Uh, overall lot coverage is 30.2%. Uh, 
and there's an existing non-conforming side yard setback at 6.3 feet on the east side of the house. So the application is uh, for approval of a, an alteration to a pre-existing non-conforming structure as well as lot coverage over 20%, up to 25% by special permit. The applicant would like to demolish a portion of the first floor and reconstruct the first floor and add an addition. Uh, reconstruct the second floor with uh, that would include non-habitable attic space. There was some question about that on the wastewater referral, so the plan does note from the architect that it is non-habitable attic space uh, because of the low ceiling height. The increase in lot coverage is tw to 21.8% by about 570 square feet. Increase uh, overall lot coverage is the same amount, 570 square feet to 38.3 under the 40% allowed by the bylaw. So this is the site plan. You'll see in the uh, uh, Jericho path is at the top of the screen and then the proposed addition is at the rear of the existing home. Uh, the non-conforming setback <coughs> on the existing house is on the right side of the screen and uh, you have the walkway coming in. We did update the plan to um, add the dry wells and the silt fence for erosion control to address the referrals from uh, engineering and uh, from engineering. <coughs> uh, these are the floor plans that are in your file. So the hashed area is the existing portion of the um, house that will remain and the unhashed area on the first existing floor plan will be uh, uh, demolished and reconstructed. And then in the middle plan, you'll see the addition in the back. So the applicants are really looking to expand the first floor living space, add a master bedroom and master bath, and add some additional uh, bedrooms <coughs> on the second floor. The attic uh, space, as I mentioned, would be non-habitable space. Um, and an additional bathroom on the second floor. These are the elevation plans. So you'll see from the front elevation that the existing style of the house will, will be relatively similar. And the addition, the bulk of the addition is at the rear of the property with the two-story <laughs> addition. The height is 19.9 uh, feet, so well under the 35 feet allowed. And these are the provisions of the lot coverage section, uh, formerly 240-69E. 25% um, lot coverage by structure for this lot is 1,758 square feet. So we're requesting approval for 1,533 square feet. The lot coverage by right is 1,406. So we're just slightly over the 20% at 127 square feet of additional lot coverage, relatively minor, I would suggest. Uh, the size and height of the structures is in keeping with the neighborhood homes. There really aren't any adverse impacts on the adjacent properties or the neighborhood. If you've been up to the neighborhood, it is somewhat in transition with houses being rebuilt, uh, many two-story homes, no adverse traffic impacts. The four bedrooms are permitted uh, in the sewer district. The office is actually an office. It does not meet the definition of a Title V uh, bedroom, and that uh, was confirmed by Amy Lowell um, in her subsequent uh, email. <clears throat> and I did file a lot coverage analysis um, showing uh, the neighboring properties with lot coverage over 20% by structure. And under the former 240-3C, the non-conforming structure section I would submit that the addition is uh, not substantially more detrimental. There's not going to be any increase in that setback. Um, the addition complies with the setbacks and the standards of the bylaw are met. And I also had a couple of photos that I wanted to just show you um, of some of the neighboring homes. So these are some of the homes that are on the lot coverage list that I uh, filed with you just to give you a sense of the bulk of uh, some of the neighboring structures on Jericho Path and Hawthorne Court. So, so with that, we'd be happy to, to answer any questions. 
Thank you, Attorney Moynihan. Board questions. Jerry, do you want to start us off? Uh, just a, you're only asking for four bedrooms. The attic is not going to be habitable. Correct. And I had thought in the past it's the Board of Health that rules on the definition of a bedroom. I think you refer it to Amy Lowell. It might be a minor point, but. Yeah, I think because it's in the sewer district, um, the health agent is deferring to Amy Lowell, the wastewater superintendent, to make, and you'll see from his referral that he's deferring to her. Okay. She's saying, you know, it's four bedrooms, and I think she even copied him on that update. So um, because she, she has to look at it to see if there's any uh, um, additional approval needed under the flow neutral right. bylaw. <clears throat> But we were very careful to limit it to four bedrooms and make sure that office area stayed as a non-bedroom. No further questions. Thank you, Jerry. James? Uh, Council, I would note there is, for the record, there is a FEMA cost uh, breakdown worksheet in the file. Uh, did you file anything with the CONCOM? Uh, we did, the applicant did file for the RDA with the CONCON. I don't believe it's been granted yet, but it should be readily done, so be happy to accept any kind of condition that it would be subject to conservation approval of, uh, as mentioned in the referral. Thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you, James. Scott, uh, could you repeat the uh, ridge height, please? Was it 19 feet? 19 6? feet, 19.9 he has on it, feet, yeah. And, yeah, I, I guess that, that was the clarifier, too, here. I was looking at Amy Lowell's email correspondence, and and she was saying that she thought it was five bedrooms, but you've already clarified that there's four, so that's good. Thank you. You're welcome. No further questions. All right, thank you, Scott. Suzanne? Can you tell me how close the two houses are that are on either side? Uh, Ballpark. Let's see if, if I can bring that up again. This is the GIS map. Mm -hmm. So here is 129. And you'll see on the right-hand side, 135, the house is fairly significant distance. 127 is here. That's actually owned by the applicant's sister. Um, so hopefully she has no objections. <laughs> <laughs> um, 123, I believe, is owned by the family as well. I, when I drove by, I did notice that one was really yeah. kind of close. That, That's I why think I that would be the one uh, at 120, 127, yeah. which is a family home. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Suzanne. And Attorney Moynihan, uh, regarding the office study, you are showing a four foot opening on the plans, correct? correct? Yes. And apologies in advance, but that 19.9 .9 ridge height, is that? The existing height, or is that the proposed height proposed. of the addition? Yeah, okay. the, the addition is slightly higher in the back. And what's the existing height of, um, of the I current structure? I didn't have an exact measurement, but it looked like it was maybe you know a few feet uh, less in height. Okay. Let's see from the elevation plans. Oh, did you want to? Did you want no, me to show oh, no, that? No, 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 okay. that's fine. I was, I was listening and also looking at my notes. Okay. Um, the only nonconformity, as it exists right now, is that uh, six point three feet to the east side of the house. Correct. Okay. All right. That does it for me. Uh, public comment. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Seeing none. Back to the board. Any sort of follow-up questions? None. No. All right. Would anyone like to make a motion to close the hearing now? Motion to close. All Second. right. Motion to close made by James, second by Jerry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. And how would the board like to proceed? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Motion to approve made by Jerry and second by James. On to findings. So, okay, let me take a stab at this. 240-10.1C3, 240-11.3A4. Uh, seeking to demolish uh, a portion and construct a second floor addition. Uh, property is located on Jericho Path on a lot of approximately 7,031 square feet. It's in an RC zone. 
Uh, it does lie within the Little Pond Coastal Overlay District in an AE 13 flood zone. It is on town sewer. Uh, existing structure is 963 feet, looking to go to 1,533 square feet. Uh, percentage of lot coverage is at 13.7, going to 21.8. Uh, testimony is that the ridge height of the addition will be 19.9 feet. FEMA worksheet is in the file. Testimony is that uh, an RDA has been requested from CONCOM. There are no objections in the file, no objections offered at the hearing. Uh, yeah, existing nonconformity is a 6.3 foot sideback. Uh, there are no additional new nonconformities created by the project. Excellent. Four bedrooms, I guess. Or four beds remain, or yep, four beds on sewer, so they're allowed for. No habitable space in the attic. Yep. The study will have a four foot opening. Yep, office studies having a four foot opening. I, for uh, one, don't mind if it's just a four foot open rather than a casement, but. People have been known to go back and close in the casement, so. Right. Uh, there was a lot coverage analysis, not? Yes. Mm -hmm. And dry wells were added per the engineering's yes. recommendation. It's in keeping with the neighborhood, enhances the utilization of the property for the <coughs> property owners. Anything else for findings? It was less than 50%, right, the FEMA? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. No letters for or against. All right. <laughs> Is it? I think you need to flip that section. One more section. There you go. Give us a hint. and support my apologies <laughs> the post-it note that said letter of support was confusing me there we go all right so that's that's in his findings anything else for findings conditions for a plan complete plan. Hong Kong process Com yep, yep. Uh, standard hours of work parking of vehicles yep uh, remain on site for construction activities um, engineering's I'd just give them I'd give them a little if they can't do that just to work with the police department and neighbors still sure. because it's that's a tight neighborhood uh, erosion sediment controls and then substituting the ZBA yep. is. so one suggestion with that where they are going to be going through conservation we normally defer soil erosion and sediment control right. to conservation because they're reviewing the proposal and engineering may just not have picked that up <laughs> so I think what we can do is um, they're seeing conservation on the 29th of June. So we can just just leave it as any have soil erosion and sediment down. control yeah. under conservation. Sounds like Fine. we can defer to Conco. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else for conditions? Uh, four bedroom, no habitable space in the attic, uh, and the den is a den. Oh, no, just four bedrooms. Uh, the wastewater super also requested that there be an application to wastewater for a sewer modification permit with a plan. And they also requested to have the grinder pump piping and valve riser box protected during construction. So I would recommend to add those into the conditions. All right. Thank you, Marie. That it remain as a single family use. Sounds good. Anything else? All right, so that was motion to approve with conditions made by Jerry, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you, Attorney Moynihan. Thank you. All right, up next we have application 43 22 Molino, 137 Old Main Road in North Falmouth, requesting a special permit to allow an above ground pool, increasing lot coverage by structures. 
So being all persons deemed affected by the Board of Appeals under Section 11 of Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws, you were hereby notified that application number 43-22, Stephen J. and Ruth Ann Molyneux, 137 Old Main Road, North Falmouth, have applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to Sections 240-11.3A4 and 240-10.2A, previously 240-3C and 24069E of the Code of Falmouth to allow an above-ground pool, increasing lot coverage by structures on the subject property known as 137 Old Main Road, North Falmouth, Mass. For referrals. Wastewater has or Marine Environmental has no comment, CONCOM, no comment as the above reference project appears to be outside of CONCOM jurisdiction. And engineering. Application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of ways and public utilities. Old Main Road is a public right of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any changes within the right of way would require filing a permit with the engineering division. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. Three, the project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property, abutters, or public rights of way. Fire department has no comments or issues. Water Department, no comments. Health Department has no issues with this proposal as there is no setback requirement for an above ground pool. Assessors, no comment. Historical Commission slash planning. Applicant received an administrative approval from the Historical Commission. Approval is attached. No comment from Planning Board, from the Falmouth Historical Commission. Determination of non-applicability is in the file. Correspondence from a Dorn and Janet Ulrich of 140 Old Main Road. We fully support the approval of the above application. There is a lot coverage calculation uh, in the file. And that does it? Yep. Great. Okay. And for the applicant. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I'm here. My name is Lauren Levesque. Um, I live at 67 Church Street in Woods Hole, Mass. And I'm here representing my parents, Stephen Ruth Ann Molyneux, who couldn't be here tonight because their plane, their flight from a, a vacation got canceled and they're stuck in California. Poor <laughs> things. So <laughs> here I am um, to <clears throat> just come here and uh, present the plan. It's quite straightforward. So we have a um, plan here from, let's see, Falmouth Engineering. Let me see if I can figure out how to zoom out. Hmm. Um, but before you really get into it, um, did, did you provide any author, or did your parents provide any authorization? Yes, I believe that I've been in touch with Ashley. I have emails on my, um, on my phone, which I did power off, but I'm happy to, to, you no know, worries. turn it on. And, hmm. Okay. Well, okay. yeah, I, I have an email exchange, but she may not have received a reply back. I'm not sure about that. If we could forward that now, I'm perfectly comfortable yeah, I, going yeah, forward. And this is yeah. not a yeah. complex right. issue. Right. Okay. Just forward uh, that email to the zoning administrator before you leave here tonight? Yes, sure. So that's the a Ashley DeMello address. Is that who I'm sending it to or? That's fine. Okay. All right. So yeah, I do have have a, you know, an email chain that my mother um, <clears throat> forwarded along to me. Um, so I think we're able to see everything we need to see here. Um, yeah, if I just scroll down to here. Um, so uh, my parents are proposing to um, install a new pool in the backyard. Um, the footprint is on top of an existing bluestone patio. Um, the yard is fully fenced and, um, and they're doing above ground due to septic requirements that 
prevented a, an in-ground pool. Um, the pool will be nine and a half by 19 and a half feet, four and a half feet deep. And um, the way that they're addressing the access to the pool, as shown on the plan, is providing a, a step um, along one end, one foot by 15 foot step up to a raised bluestone patio. And then the pool itself will be retained within a stone wall surround, sort of like a, a bench all the way around. Um, so um, I think that's probably the basic um, information. The, the existing lot coverage um, with you know the existing structures is 2,100 square feet, so 20.5%. Um, with the addition of this proposed structure, it would be bringing the coverage to 2,523 square feet, or 24.7% lot coverage. Um, the, we d also do have a letter by, um, from the abutters at 143 Old Main that I, I think happened through email, so I think it didn't get to you in time. but. Um, we but I can submit that. You have that from the uh, Sullivans? Okay. So, yeah, there's the Ulrichs across the way, the Sullivans, which are the only abutter. The other two neighboring properties are separated by that existing right of way shown on the bottom of the plan. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Sounds good. Thank you. Suzanne, anything? No, I think I'm good. All right. Scott? Thank you. Uh, so the historical commission, uh, they were okay with everything, but again, just wanted to make sure that the cedar fence did enclose the full backyard so there's no uh, access to it. Is that correct? Yes, the current plan is to is to maintain the fence that they already have, or I think they'll replace it with a identical, you know, six-foot-tall board fence all the way around. Great, um, thank you. So, yeah, it's not visible from any, any point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. question. James? Is this property the old Grange Hall? It sure is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. And that's part of why the, the coverage is high, because it's the smallest lot in the neighborhood. It's essentially, you know, the, the big old Grange Hall, some parking out front, and a small um, yard, you know, around each side. All right. Jerry? Uh, I'll leave it up to the building department for the permit, whether they need a, f a fence and a lawn. They traditionally permit pools, if I remember correctly. I don't want to second guess them, just require them to apply to the building department okay. yep. for any appropriate permits for safety. Yeah, yeah, I think that the pool installer typically does that application, but I'm, I'm not sure how that works. I know I've, I was there for a meeting where they discussed pulling the appropriate permits for the project. Anything else, Jerry? No. Nope. All right. Not this thing. So you, you are showing 10 and a half feet um, on either side of the pool of the property line? Correct. And the shed, the existing shed's going to remain? Existing shed will stay where it is, yep. All right. Does it for me. Uh, members of the public, any questions, pu questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Not seeing any. Back to the board. Motion to close. All right. Motion to close. Second. Made by James and second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. Okay. Thank oh, you. Well, we're not oh, done yet. No. Oh, we're, we're, <laughs> almost, we're almost yeah. there. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Anyone want to make a motion to approve? <laughs> motion to approve with conditions. All right. Thank you, James. Second. Second by Scott. Thank you, Scott. Findings? So 240-11.3A4 and 24010.2A. Uh, applicant seeks to install an above ground pool at 137 Old Main, North Falmouth. Uh, there was testimony that the applicant's representative is their daughter, does have permission, and an email testing that will be forwarded to the board. Uh, project seeks to put in a 9.5 by 19 foot above ground pool, approximately 4.5 feet deep. Uh, existing structure on the property is 2,100 square feet or 20.5% lot coverage with the addition of a pool. Uh, approximately 423 would be added, bringing lot coverage to 24.7%. Uh, property is in a historic district. There was a uh, correspondence that uh, the historic in North Falmouth is uh, 
what's the term? Drawing a blank. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> Negative. Uh, no, no, yeah, thank you. I think that's what it was. Testimony, uh, one neighbor uh, in favor. We did receive uh, written correspondence from the other neighbor uh, in favor of the project. All right. Did you mention that cedar fence enclosure? I didn't. Okay. Scott did. <laughs> Good job, Scott. So noted. All right. Uh, anything else for findings? That just about does it for findings. Conditions. Per plan? Per plans, uh, applicants to comply with any safety requirements of the building or health department concerning pools. Very good. Standard work hours, equipment off uh, property. It's not possible just to work with the police department. All right. I think I might just do it for conditions, unless I'm missing anything. All right, so that was a motion to approve with conditions made by James, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Up next, we have application number 44-22, Brant, 95 Club Valley Drive in East Falmouth, requesting a special permit to allow a home occupation to operate a yoga studio. So being all persons deemed affected by the Board of Appeals under Section 11 of Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws, you are hereby notified that application 44-22, Michelle C. Brant, 95 Club Valley Drive, East Falmouth, Mass, applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to Sections 240-9.5B1A, formerly 240-162, the Code of Falmouth to allow home occupation to operate a yoga studio. Subject property is 95 Club Valley Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. The referrals. Uh, in the file, we are, there's a cease and desist order dated March 4th, 2022 to Michelle Brandt, 95 Club Valley Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. Uh, cease and desist order for a home-based service business. Uh, dear Ms. Brandt, on March 4th, 2022, you were sent a certified return receipt, a notice of violation for the above reference property, which is the owner. You had a discussion with the assistant zoning compliance agent on March 10th, 2022, that as your property is non-conforming, you need a special permit through the Zoning Board of Appeals, and if approved, need a use of occupancy for a home-based service business. Also work that was completed in the area of the home where there is aerial yoga is taking place appears to be altered without a building permit. On March 22nd, 2022, at 6.30 p.m., it was witnessed by the assistant zoning compliance agent that you were still conducting a home-based service business. Based on the above, you're hereby ordered to cease and desist conducting a home-based service business Immediately upon receipt of the cease and desist letter, cease and desist letter may be appealed per Mass General Law 40A, sections 8 and 15. Failure to comply with the cease and desist order of all activity on the subject property as outlined herein may incur further legal filings and or fees, including Superior Court injunction. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the cease and desist, you may contact me. Signed, Gary Street, Building Commissioner and Zoning Enforcement Officer. Uh, correspondence from Jonathan Dixon, uh, High Noreen, regards to the cease and desist order at 95 Club Valley Drive. There is a typographical error in the date, letter stage March 4th, 2022, but it was sent on March 23rd, 2022. I'll copy the letter. Proof of service of the letter. Documentation. Respondents indicating that an appeal was filed to the town clerk pursuant to 40A, sections 815, uh, appealing 24202, the Code of Falmouth, appealing the building commissioner's determination, request for special permit. CONCOM, no comments in the above reference project as it appears to be outside of CONCOM jurisdiction. Engineering.
Application was reviewed for impacts to public right-of-ways and public utilities. Club Valley Drive and Fordham Road are public right-of-ways in the area. No alterations are proposed to the right-of-way. Any changes within the right-of-way would require a filing, excuse me, require filing with a permit with the engineering division. No site work is proposed. We have no comments. Water. No comments. Planning. No comments. from Tracy Briggs in support of the yoga studio. Another letter of support. Petition support with There's a tally on the cover there for you Sorry? of the support. 28 letters of support, four sheets, uh, individual uh, sheets in support, one letter of opposition. Unless you'd like me to read them all. <laughs> no. <laughs> what was the opposition just for? You had to make this difficult. No, I just, you know. <laughs> If Attorney Amont knows what it was, he can reference it in his uh, presentation. Guess not. It's going to be the 29th document, right? <laughs> I'm working backwards. That's usually where it is. <laughs> I can withdraw the request. I just. Uh, Mr. Patamis, what was your request? What the letter of opposition was. I guess they could be here tonight if they so chose to. Suggestion, Mr. Chairman, would be to let I'll the presentation go on, and I can find it and get it in at the I, end of the hearing. Okay. I think that's a good idea, Attorney Almond. If you want to start us off, thank you, Mr. Hurry. Members of the board and the public, for uh, the board's record, I'm Bob Almond. I'm an attorney in Falmouth. I'm here with my partner, Kevin Clower. Our office is right outside next door, and I'm representing Michelle Brandt, who is in the last row here, who seeks the special permit for a home occupation to operate her yoga studio. The address is 95 Club Valley Road in Ashumit Valley. I have uh, put on the plan, uh, the screen for you a uh, assessor's map that shows the large subdivision laid out uh, around the Paul Harney uh, Golf Club in the 1960s. And uh, Michelle's uh, house is right about uh, smack in the middle of it and very close to the golf course, as most of the houses are. Michelle is a certified yoga instructor, and the home occupation would involve pre-scheduled private sessions for individuals, couples, and small groups. Michelle teaches stretching and balancing and strengthening exercises. And the benefits include uh, prescribed therapy and pain relief. 
a number of the letters that have been submitted to the board attest to the importance of uh, what Michelle does uh, to um, her uh, students. Now, Michelle's home yoga studio measures about 440 square feet. It's on the second floor of her house, and renovations have been completed. A building permit was issued and closed. We submitted photos of uh, the house and the yoga studio itself with the application, so you should have those. Now, in general, a home occupation like Michelle's proposed occupation would be allowed by right. That's important for the board to keep in mind that our zoning bylaw allows home occupation as a customary accessory residential use subject to certain conditions, certain limitations that are set forth in the bylaw with no special permit required. But a special permit is required if a lot is undersized. And today the lots uh, the whole area of a Schumann Valley is in an agricultural A zoning district, requires 45,000 square foot lots. So all of those lots, as are probably most of the lots in Falmouth, they're undersized. But Michelle's lot is uh, over 20,000 square feet. So, and it's legally non-conforming, of course. That's a good sized lot, and it's more than ample uh, so that the home occupation that she uh, proposes will have no adverse impacts on the neighborhood. Lot coverage by structures is only 11.49%. Total lot coverage is only 28.32%. As you know, 40% would be allowed. And the home occupation involves no changes to the exterior of the house and no changes to those lot coverage figures. All of the setbacks are compliant. And the lot is a corner lot on an unusually wide intersection. And Club Valley Drive actually has a vegetated center median next to uh, Michelle's house, so uh, the lot feels even more spacious than it is. The home occupation use of the property will not affect utilities or other public services. There's town water and trash removal, underground electricity, oil, heat. It won't affect drainage or on-site sewage disposal. Now, the proposed home occupation will meet all the requirements of the home occupation bylaw. I'm going to just show you the plot plan. This is a survey of the lot with uh, the existing conditions shown. And it shows the location at the intersection of Fordham Road and Club Valley. A drive shows the setbacks, has the lot coverage information on it, and so on. As I said, the studio measures 440 square feet. That's about 19.9% of the finished floor area of the house, the bylaw allows up to 30%. As I said, there'll be no change in the outside appearance of the premises, no evidence of the home occupation except for allow her allowed parking of up to two additional vehicles at a time and any allowed sign, a small sign identifying the home occupation is allowed by the bylaw. Again, these are all by right provisions and restrictions. Um, would always have to be complied with for a home occupation, but would not require a special permit except for our, that our lot is small. There'll be no exterior storage of material or equipment. And I suppose that's a good time to point out that home occupation is different than a home-based service business. Home-based service business allows by special permit in a residential district a much more impactful uh, operation where a home can be the base for a service business, a contractor's business, for instance, a landscaping business that uh, provides services elsewhere. 
and the bylaw, continuation of the same section that the home occupation is in, describes what can be allowed by the Board of Appeals. Um, two company trucks um, that can be large uh, uh, delivery trucks, um, two employees allowed on the property uh, to actually work there, up to 10% uh, of the lot can be used for storage, exterior storage of materials and equipment. Uh, other employees can come to the site to receive um, you know, daily work orders, for instance. It's a completely different animal. Home-based service business is completely different from the kind of home occupation that's allowed by right or by special permit on an undersized lot. I point that out in part because the, the building commissioner's letter that was referred to earlier referred to a home-based uh, service business, which is not what we are requesting tonight. I want to make that clear. This home occupation won't be noticeable except for there can be two cars, there could be a small sign. That's it. Otherwise, it can't be noticeable. There'll be no trading and merchandise on the property. Nothing is sold there. Again, a condition of any home occupation. The home occupation will not create noise, vibration, flare, fumes, odors, or electrical interference detectable to the normal senses off the lot, nor interfere with radio or television receivers. I think that should be obvious, but that's what the uh, bylaw calls for you to consider. Traffic generated by the home occupation will not be greater in volume than would be normally expected in the neighborhood. As I said, it's 230 homes, and it includes the public Paul Harney golf course, golf course, clubhouse, and a parking area for 71 cars uh, on Club Valley Drive, only about 500 feet from uh, Michelle's house. I submitted to you an aerial photograph from 2021 um, on, in the town's GIS site that shows that parking lot and filled with cars. There won't be an increase in traffic that will be noticeable in this uh, subdivision. There'll be no uh, jeopardy to traffic safety in the neighborhood. The yoga studio will be scaled and operated so that parking will not be increased by more than the two cars that are allowed. And those additional vehicles that are allowed will be off of Fordham Road, not on the street or in the shoulders. The building commissioner has designated Club Valley Drive as the primary front yard allowing the property line along Fordham Road to be a side yard with the required setback of five feet for parking. The uh, setback of over six feet is shown on the plan that's before you. Now petitions or letters supporting Michelle's application have been submitted with more than 50 signatures. Most are from Ashumet uh, Valley residents. And we've submitted a map, and I'm going to show this to you, that shows the support from people whose homes are right around Michelle's house. This is a portion of the assessor's map. Right in the middle, surrounded in an orange, is uh, Michelle's house. And you can see that the letters you've received, the petitions that have been signed, are uh, among those are the 17 or 18 property owners uh, indicated on this, uh, this plan. Um, nobody who will even see the cars that are uh, parked um, for the two additional cars for the home occupation that is allowed, nobody will be seeing those from their homes except people who have, have signed this. Um, if you have any questions about this information, which I think is so important, well, please ask. The map shows persuasively that neighbors who could be affected don't think there'll be a problem. And these positive expectations are actually based on experience. Michelle operated her home studio for many months before, uh, during COVID, until she learned earlier this year um, from the notices you've uh, referred to that because the lot is undersized, a special permit is needed. She had been told at town hall 
that she only needed to file a DBA certificate, which is what she did. And that advice would have been perfectly good and correct if her lot weren't undersized, but she didn't know that there was a problem. She now knows that there's a two-car limit, and her studio will operate accordingly. Michelle, since that notice received, and now offers classes for larger groups at business and institutional facilities elsewhere in town, and that will continue. And we are aware of only that one letter of opposition that you referred to from someone in the neighborhood, not in a butter. And the opposition, opposition seems based not on the particulars of Michelle's operation as proposed, but on a position that there should simply be no home occupations in a Schumann Valley. And that's a thinking that is simply uh, diametrically opposed to what the zoning bylaw um, allows. The yoga studio will have no adverse effects at all on either the neighborhood or the town. A special permit will allow Michelle to maintain her attractive property, perhaps increase its value, which is a benefit to the town, and to offer her beneficial teaching in a calm and soothing and affordable residential setting. Several of the letters to the board have described how important that is to them. The board's granting of the requested special permit requires your consideration of the review criteria set forth in bylaw section 24012.1E1. And based on the materials presented and the information I've discussed, the proposed home occupation will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw. Before I close, I do want to address um, the fact that you have put into the record, apparently, and made reference this evening to violation notices. As I uh, told the Board of Appeals and put in a letter to the board um, administrator on June 1 of 2022, it is inappropriate for the uh, board to consider past violations uh, in your, making your decision. I cited the case law and um, in other cases when matters went to court, the chairman of the board was required to uh, provide testimony and affidavit that the board did not consider the violations in making its decision, and there shouldn't have even been any discussion of it. So I'm surprised that uh, those documents are still in your uh, record. Um, such information is useful only for the purpose of showing the impacts on the neighborhood from the proposed um, home occupation. Um, if previous operation of, of a um, use that could only be done with a special permit um, brought with it problems to the neighborhood, that would be relevant. Not that the fact that somebody made a violation, even if it was knowingly, in this case it wasn't knowing. Um, but in this case, the only information we have, uh, we have no information as to that there was a problem caused. And you have all of the neighbors, almost all of the neighbors surrounding the uh, locus uh, writing to you, having had the experience of the yoga studio operating for a period of time, uh, saying that they're in favor of it. So I would hope that that would be very important to you your consideration. And I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm able to answer any questions you might have to the best of my ability. Thank you, Attorney Ahmed. Jerry, would you like to start us off with board questions? I think, did you, how many employees would be in? None. Uh, it's just uh, Okay, Michelle. that's what I just want to make sure. Zero. Uh, that would require a separate special permit or part of the special permit. No employees. No further questions. Thank you, Jerry. James? Can you define what a small group is in a yoga class? Well, um, one could certainly imagine um, um, a family coming of four or five people and doing it. Uh, there could be um, a, a small group that's arranged to have um, a lesson that could come together, it, perhaps in two cars. So it's really what... <laughs> Um, there is a limit to uh, what um, Michelle can accommodate in uh, the yoga studio. It's uh, 
you know, it's probably about uh, six students. So wouldn't be more, a small group would not be more than about that. So the opposition letter that, <coughs> the, I did find it, I can read it if Mr. Tamas wants to hear it. It seems that the significant gist of the complaint, as you stated, is that it, regarding commercial activity, I'm not gonna consider that, but the, the gripe that I think is fair before the ZBA is about parking. Uh, he's complaining that previously there was a lot of cars being parked in the neighborhood. Yeah. The testimony now is that there will not be more than two cars parking. That's correct. That's required to comply with the bylaw now that we know, now that um, Michelle understands what she can do and what she can't do. Um, that's what the bylaw says. She has to uh, abide by that. Um, she also disagrees with the representation made in that letter that there were a lot of cars parked. Um, but that's not what we're asking for. Thank you. Thank you, James. Scott, anything? No, it seems as though you adhere to the home occupation uh, criteria very well. Um, James brings it up. It's all about vehicles and, and people's concerns. So uh, my concern also was the definition of the small group. You answered that. Uh, so the, the yoga studio is on the second floor. And I take it there's proper handrails and everything and access for people to the get up The property and down. was just inspected uh, by the uh, building department and the permit for the renovations um, was both issued and closed. Thank you very much. A couple of questions. I drove by and I thought the parking looked more than adequate. There was four spots I thought looked and it's not impeding on anybody, I, I, I didn't think. They can back right out into the original driveway. It looked fine to me. Um, will there be any activity outdoors, or is it no, all going to be in the no, second floor? No, there won't be. Uh, that would seem to violate the uh, requirement that it not be noticeable. Um, but whether that could be allowed or not, we're not asking for it. And what about the hours of operation? Well, uh, people um, often leave work and come to um, a, a yoga session. Um, to date, the classes have not gone past seven, as I understand it. However, there is no restriction for the home occupation, whereas for a home-based service business, there specifically is, okay. which happens to be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, I think that as long as the home occupation is as it must be, quiet, unnoticeable, no more than two cars, the board shouldn't be concerned about the hours of operation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, attorney Amman, regarding the small groups, so the numeric amount wasn't defined by testimony, but whatever that amount may be, it won't exceed the two car limit, right? That's correct. Okay. And regarding the appeal of the building commissioner's determination under 24012-4A1B, I, that's the new one, I think I got it right. Um, so I was previously not familiar with that case law that you cited here tonight. Uh, but if an application is made for an appeal of a building commissioner's decision, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to reconcile the case law and this bylaw, how can how can this board review or properly determine whether something was done on the building commissioner's level when there's cease and desist orders? But Mr. Hurry, the posture of this case is not and never was an appeal. A letter was sent which mistakenly said a, a home-based service business was being operated. That was wrong. But a, home, but a home occupation was being operated. And because it's an undersized lot, this wasn't stated in the building commissioner's letter, this was based on our review of what Michelle had to do in order to legalize the situation and correct the problem. We needed a special permit for a home occupation, not a home-based service business. If we were appealing the building commissioner's letter, we would have had to do so within 30 days of its issuance. No appeal was ever intended. What was going on wasn't authorized, and we never said it was. 
Now, after receiving the letter from the building commissioner, Michelle stopped operating her home occupation and she rented space elsewhere. Under those circumstances, we weren't appealing the building commissioner's letter. We did not have an act of violation and we were trying to do everything right. Apply for a special permit. Inside the fact how many special, how many home occupations are going on around town on undersized lots that, that nobody thought needed a special permit. Well, whatever. This case, we found out about it. We're doing it right. To have included a reference to a violation which was not appealed and which had, in fact, been cured by just stopping in the notice of an application which wasn't for an appeal, but was simply to seek a special permit, was an error. To have included that information in the file for this application was an error. And I've submitted the case law in my correspondence of June 1 that backs me up on that. So if you understand what we're trying to do, we're simply asking for a special permit for a home occupation, which would be a by right use, but for it being an undersized lot. We are not appealing the building commissioner. That's a long answer to your question, I guess. No, but it certainly clarifies the... And I'm not, I missed. I'd like to just, I think we can simplify it a little bit too, I think. To your point, point, Mr. Harry, if, uh, if this was an appeal, bringing up the cease and desist letter would be perfectly appropriate. But this was not filed as an appeal. It was filed simply as a special permit application. That's right. Appreciate the further clarification, Attorney <laughs> All right. Any other questions from the board? Public comments, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? All right, back to the board. Motion to close. Second. Motion to close made by Jerry and second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. And how would the board like to proceed? Would you like to have some conversation or anyone prepared to make a motion? Motion to approve with conditions. Second. Yeah. All right. Motion to approve with conditions made by Scott and second Jerry. Was that you? Yes. Thank well, you, Jerry. Yeah. All right. Findings. Two forty nine point five B one A. Subject locations at ninety five Club Valley Road, uh, East Falmouth, particularly North East Falmouth, North Falmouth, Falmouth. <laughs> Uh, applicant seeks to have a 440 square foot yoga studio as a home business occupation. Occupation. Make sure the wording's right. Yep. Your motion, Scott. <laughs> I figured that was going to come back <laughs> to haunt me. <laughs> um, goodness gracious knows. Um, it meets all the requirements of 240. Dash 9.5 under a home occupation. Yep. I, he, he went through them. I don't necessarily want to have to reiterate them, but there's six, and I think it, the attorney properly uh, right. Four, refused, uh, com showed how the applicant would be in compliance. 440 square feet operating on the second floor of the house. Right. No change in the exterior, no merchandise being sold, yeah. no noise, vibrations, anything else like that. Two uh, parking spaces, no yeah. employees. Minimal, tra minimal traffic, only employee is the applicant herself. Uh, two car maximum. Condition. She's proposing uh, pre-scheduled sessions, single couples and use the term small groups. 28 letters in support, as well as four signature sheets with approximately 50 signatures. One letter of opposition, no opposition at the hearing. It's in, it's in harmony with the neighborhood. I think that's the one that requires a special permit. Yeah, Well, it is an army with any input. Was there testimony regarding hours of operation? There was testimony that it's not applicable. Right. 
because of the home occupation. Mm -hmm. That was the testimony, and I think that. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to get it right. I only scribbled out half of it in my notes. Hours of operation referred to home service base. So. Anything else in terms of findings? No outside classes? That's conditioning. There'll be conditions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was small groups a maximum of six people? I think it's no more than two cars. Five to six, care. no more than two cars? Could put a van could come in with more than <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that studio is going to be a tight spot. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else for findings? How about conditions? No more than two cats. And the outside classes. Are no employee other than the owner. Okay, anything else in terms of conditions? So if that does it, that was a motion to approve made by Scott and second by Jerry, or motion to approve with conditions, I should say. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. House is unanimously. Attorney Ahmed, thank you. Moving on to our open meeting items, we have voting the minutes of May 12th, May 19th, and June 9th. And we're tabling the 9th. Tabling the 9th. I have to abstain from the 12th because I wasn't there. I think, TJ, you might not have been there. Um, I think I was here for both. So. Was I not here the 5th or the 12th? It was the meeting after Mother's Day. <laughs> I was on the pink. Trying to find the minutes. <laughs> Here we go. Which ones are we tabling? The I'm nine. sorry, the ninth. The nine. We're tabling. Jerry, you and I were not here. Very good. Yep. There must be an echo in here. Yeah. Could be a vote of two, I suppose. Rule of necessity. Uh, yeah. it's all so I'll, I'll James make and Scott. Yeah. Move to approve the minutes of May 12th and May 19th. Second. How about how about just May? Because we can May 12th. Because we can. I'll modify my motion to approve the minutes of May 12th only. All right. And I'll second, second that. Second, Scott. Yep. James and Scott are in favor, so you are? Aye. All right, two of, sorry, no, three abstentions, I guess, with uh, Susanna. She wasn't even on the no. board yet. All right, so no that, pa that passes unanimously with two. All right, May 19th. Motion yeah. approved. All right, motion approved made by Jerry. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I was there for that one. <laughs> All right, and tabling June 9th. Request for insubstantial change modifications to previously approved plans, comprehensive permit numbers 90-17, 90-17M, 63-20, and 63-20M2, Helmuth Circle LLC, Kendall Lane, and Falmouth with a vote anticipated. Do me to read this whole thing? <laughs> um, it is lengthy, isn't it? It is. Noreen, can we summarize? Oh, we read the whole thing. I think. Um, Attorney do you Moynihan is here. Summarize for the board. Attorney Moynihan, do you? That's open meeting. So. It's an open meeting. It's not a hearing, but I'm happy <coughs> with the chair's permission to um, summarize for you. Of course you can. Okay. Uh, so this is a notice of project change it's with respect to lots three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine only of the 28 lots that are subject to this comprehensive permit. 
The request is to uh, modify the permit to add or modify wood decks and eliminate patios on those lots. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. They're located on the north side of Kendall Lane. That's the side of the subdivision that abuts the wooded area uh, to the north. The comprehensive permit allowed for patios for these lots. However, during the construction process, it became apparent that the grade changes, significant grade changes, would make patios impractical, uh, and that wood decks at the egress level um, are appropriate for these dwellings. The dwellings affected are all what are called the base cape design, um, for which the applicant was granted approval to install at its option a 10 foot by 10 foot wood deck or a 10 foot by 10 foot bonus room. Comprehensive permit requires that one of the seven affordable units have a bonus room constructed. Lots five and nine are affordable housing units. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So of the seven lots that we're talking about, two of them are affordable units that we're asking for the decks as well. The bonus room would be installed on lot five. Uh, the applicant would eliminate the bonus room on the base cape dwelling lots referenced below. So for each lot, I could certainly go through uh, the letter um, if you'd like me to do that, Mr. Chairman. Sure, if you could please. Okay. Lot three, grade change is four feet, so it would be five steps to the patio from the uh, slider, essentially, at the rear. What was approved was a base cape dwelling with a 10 by 20 patio, pervious patio. The proposed change would be to eliminate the 10 by 20 patio and construct a 10 by 20 wood deck. No bonus room would be constructed. So straight change there, patio to deck, same size, no bonus room. Lot four, the grade change is 4.5 feet, would be six steps to a patio. Um, and again, you're looking at uh, what was approved was the base cape dwelling with the optional 10 by 10 bonus room or 10 by 10 wood deck and a 10 by 20 pervious patio. So for lot four, the proposed change is to eliminate the 10 by 20 patio and expand the wood deck to 10 by 20. No bonus room there. Lot five is an affordable housing unit. The grade change is 5.5 feet, seven steps to the patio. What's approved was a base cape dwelling with an optional 10 by 10 bonus room or a 10 by 10 wood deck and a 10 by 20 pervious patio. The proposed change would be to eliminate the 10 by 20 patio and construct a 10 by 10 bonus room with a 10 by 10 wood deck. Lot six, grade change is six feet, eight steps to the patio. What was approved was a base cape dwelling with the optional 10 by 10 bonus room or 10 by 10 wood deck and a 10 by 20 pervious patio. The proposed change would be to eliminate the 10 by 20 patio and construct a 10 by 10 bonus room with a 10 by 10 wood deck. Lot seven, grade change is 6.5 feet, nine steps to the patio. What was approved was a base cape dwelling with an optional 10 by 10 bonus room or a 10 by 10 wood deck and 10 by 20 pervious patio. The proposed change is to eliminate the 10 by 20 patio and construct a 10 by 20 wood deck without a bonus room. Lot eight, grade change 7.23 feet would be 10 steps to the patio. What was approved was a base cape dwelling with an optional 10 by 10 bonus room or 10 by 10 wood deck and a 10 by 20 pervious patio. The change would be to eliminate the 10 by 20 patio and construct a 10 by 20 wood deck, no bonus room to be constructed. Lot nine is an affordable housing unit. The grade change is 5.23 feet, seven steps to the patio. What was approved was a base cape dwelling with a 10 by 10 wood deck and a 10 by 20 pervious patio. The proposed change is to eliminate the 10 by 20 patio and construct a 10 by 20 wood deck in its place, no bonus room. So the above changes will amount to an increase in lot coverage by structure by only 956 square feet or only 0.04% over the project site, from 18.6% to 19%. This includes the coverage for the steps from the proposed decks. Lot coverage by structure will be remain below 20% allowed by right under the zoning bylaw or the 25% allowed by special permit. 
The approved average lot coverage by structure for each lot over the entire project site is 23.4%. Again, the approved lot coverage, average lot coverage. This change will increase the average by 0.05% to only 23.9%. The proposed change in lot coverage by structure is a negligible increase without significance in our submission. Uh, changes are shown on the plans that have been filed with the application um, that you have in your file. We've also supplied a lot coverage worksheet. Um, we enclosed a certification letter from Depreet Engineering, uh, and the engineer is also here, Brandon Carr, tonight, uh, as well as um, <clears throat> Mr. Kelleher from the LLC. Um, the engineer has certified that uh, as to the grade changes for the lots and the very minor change in lot coverage by structure as referenced above. The patio modifications and the construction of the wood decks for these lots have been approved by the DEP uh, pursuant to an amended superseding order of conditions issued January 25, 2022. The applicant believes that the minor modifications to these lots will better serve the homeowners as to the practical function and use of the rear of the dwellings. The expanded deck areas from 10 by 10 to 10 by 20 will allow for some accommodation to the homeowners due to the elimination of the patio area. In addition, having access to passive outdoor space at the rear egress slider door that is not four feet to 7.23 feet below the first floor will be of significant benefit to the homeowners. The aesthetics overall of the dwellings will be improved. The notice of project change is provided pursuant to the 40B regulations, specifically 760 CMR 5605. The applicant is requesting that the board determine the project change to be insubstantial in accordance with the regulations. The board is to make a determination within 20 calendar days and notify the applicant whether it deems the change insubstantial or substantial. If the change is determined to be insubstantial or if the board fails to notify the applicant within the 20 calendar, calendar day limit, the comprehensive permit shall be deemed modified to incorporate the change. The process does not require a public hearing public meeting is only required, which is this meeting. The regulations uh, provide guidelines indicating that requested modifications are generally considered insubstantial if they do not change the type of housing tenure, and in this case that is not changing, still home ownership. If they do not increase the building height by more than 10%, no, no such change here. If they do not increase the number of units by more than 10%, no such change here. Or if there's no reduction in size of the site by more than 10% in excess of any decrease in the number of housing units, not the type of change here. In addition, the regulations specifically state that the following matters will not be substantial changes. A reduction in the number of housing units proposed, a change in the number of bedrooms if those changes do not alter the overall bedroom count of the housing by more than 10%, a change in the color or style of materials used, or a change in the financing program, all insubstantial changes. The applicant is not proposing any such change that it's the same or similar to such changes referenced in the regulations uh, that might deem it substanti a substantial change. <clears throat> the minor changes will have no adverse impacts and are in fact beneficial. The applicant is requesting that the board determine that the change described in the application is an insubstantial change as it is a minor change that by its nature is appropriate for administrative review and approval without a public hearing. We've given you with the application the engineer's certification letter as to the grade changes, the number of steps. We also have photographs that we've included with the application to show you the Elevation changes, if you'd like, I can put those up on the screen for you. We have a lot coverage analysis, and then we have individual plot plans for each of these uh, particular lots. So the bottom line here is that once the construction process started, it became apparent that you had very significant grade changes on that north side where the property drops down to the wetland resource area in the back. And patios just aren't practical for these particular dwellings. It's too, too large of a grade change um, to have multiple steps, stone steps or other types of steps down to a patio. So the deck, what we've tried to do is work the decks in 
We've tried to, um, in the case where a, a deck is proposed, to eliminate the patio, um, try to maintain the sizing that was uh, uh, in keeping with the original approval um, for these particular lots, um, and, um, and, and give the homeowners the, that appropriate and practical use of that space. Um, this will only affect the lots cited. The remaining lots in the subdivision will maintain the patios as approved. So with that, I can show you the photographs. Mr. Chairman, if you'd like to see them or sure, would you like me to show them to you? Okay. If you'd like to put them up. So this is the sheet that we supplied. This is lot six. The rear of lot six, you can see the egress door in this area here. Again, on lot six, you can see the change in elevation from the basement windows. Here's a more finished profile of that. And then I believe that Noreen had given you some photos as well, which I have here. <clears throat> oh, can't open those, but for some reason. Um, this is the Google Earth photo that I took. You can see the extensive buffer here on the north side of Kendall Lane. So if there's any concern about impacts to an abutter, on that side, there's, there's not going to be any. That's the Little Pond Place um, uh, property. It's actually owned by the town and under a long-term lease to the uh, Little Pond Place development. So would you like to add anything, Brian or Brandon, to that? Or would you like to see anything more on the individual plans? I have those if you'd like me to show those to you. Good. I, th I, th I think thank you for summarizing okay. correspondence to the board attorney Moynihan. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. All right. How does the board feel? I don't have any opposition to the change. Right. I, 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 there's a compelling reason for the decks versus the patio. Yep. As for the issue of the bonus room, it's on parity, one portable, one market, so. All right, and since most of the changes are to the northern side, I, I would have had more concerns, sorry, if the picture's not up anymore and I'm looking over there. Um, if it was on the southerly side uh, with the existing neighbors, I may have had more of an issue there. Uh, but since most are proposed to the north, I'd say I'm okay with it being approved as an insubstantial change. Yeah, I agree. I guess from a safety perspective, looking at these sliders and access and the topography, it seems like the developer is trying to make a make it work. So I tend to agree. I think in having been out there, and you could see from at least one or two of the pictures that it's a substantial drop off. And given the topography in that area, it really is not usable. Whereas if they have a deck, I think it gives them some outdoor space, but it also essentially protects the land because they're on the deck as opposed to altering the ground at that point. So I guess what I would recommend though is if you aren't um, looking to approve that you would then um, reinforce the condition that those patios that are eliminated cannot be replaced that you are allowing that deck in lieu of the patio so that you don't essentially wind up with a double layer. And that, you know, you also preclude future build out over that deck area. Okay, anyone else on the board want to chime in? We can make conditions on an insubstantial change. I don't see why I don't not. Want to go to I mean, I, I think if you're approving it, I think it's acceptable to approve it with limitations. Yeah. 
May I just comment, Mr. Chair? Uh, briefly, please. Um, we don't have any objection to those types of conditions, but ju just for the record, I mean, the, the schedule of the changes specifically says that the patios would be eliminated for that yeah. particular lot. Um, and any build out over the, you know, in the future, it, um, you, I guess in my submission, you don't need to condition an ins insubstantial change request because anybody coming back to do that or wanting to do that would have to come back for relief from the board. So it's inherent in the, in the decision. Um, I suppose if you wanted to put somebody on notice that, it, you know, in the, in the insubstantial change decision, that might technically be more appropriate than a condition. Thank you. Brian Kelleher, I'm with the uh, Helmet Circle uh, development team. Just a point of clarification, um, the, um, on, on a future restriction in terms of um, work building on top of the, the decks, I, I think I, I re would respectfully ask that it's for the additional deck. The house originally came with a bonus room or a deck, and a lot of people have opted not to do bonus rooms at this time. Uh, but they may want to put a room on in the future uh, in, in, the, in the spirit of kind of the, the ask, if you will, to not do the patios and do a smaller additional deck. We have no problem with, you know, restricting that, that people can't come back, and that's what we've told everybody. We, we're not looking to, down the road, be able to expand a kitchen or a bonus room or anything. We're just trying to, you know, accommodate a, a grade change that we just really didn't get a, get our head around until we got get into the project a little bit. So uh, that point of clarification, if there is going to be any type of restriction, if you will, or notice, I just like to clarify that. Does that make sense? Could you repeat what you did? are you holding that you may want to put something above the tech? Is that what you just said? Well, no, I, I, the, the, the homes come with an option of a bonus room or a deck. 10, 10 by 10. So, and people right now have chosen not to do a bonus room, but, I, you know, could they in the future do a bonus room? I think we have to come back. They have to yeah. come back. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad I could confuse everybody on that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of, you know, Notice if we can't do a condition, we can say we've proven this with the understanding or notice, whatever's palatable to you and the board. Right. I think it goes without saying if anything needs to be changed, then, yes. it, then it comes back to the board. So, all right. Would anyone like to make a motion then, if we're all, if we're all set? So I'll move that the requested change is insubstantial and that the Move to approve the change as requested. All right, motion was made by James. Is there a second? Second. Second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Came on here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Up next, we have board administrative approval. Uh, Weidenfeller, 53 Alcott Road in East Falmouth. Special permit number 17 22, modification to previously approved plants. With a vote anticipated. I think I can't do this, right? Um, this was a case that we started before. Yeah, yeah. I can't do this. So I just said. Yeah. Noreen, this was one that was on the, the agenda previously. Yes. So we just um, heard this recently. It was um, appeal or case number 17 22. Uh, board recently approved um, additions for 53 Alcott. Um, Essentially, the changes to the plan involve um, an increase in the size of the garage. It was approved to be a 16 by 24 foot garage. They're now going to 18 by 31.5. Um, it was also an, essentially an infill addition between the house and the garage, which was 11.7 by 20 feet, and it's now going to 14 
14.5 by 24. Uh, they're shifting the location of their patio slightly to the southeast, and it's increasing slightly in size. Uh, they're doing a reduction to the front porch area, which was part of the addition, and that's reducing from 8 by 11.7 to 6.2 by 14.5. Um, so the, the net change is a change in the setback to the north side. It was 27.4. It's now going to 22.5, so it's remaining conforming. So there's not a significant change, but given the fact that it's, I would say, noticeably larger than what the board approved, it made sense to have it come back before the board for those changes. All right, thank you, Noreen. Any board discussion? I concur. I think the case it council's it here if you have any questions. It appears to be an insignificant or uh, insubstantial. Uh, what are we voting on, just to make sure? Insubstantial change. Oh. Modification. Modification? Administrative approval. Administ not, that's not insubstantial change. That's yeah, going it's to be. administrative approval. Yep. No, I don't have any problem with it either. All right. Anyone like to make a motion then? I'll make a motion to administratively approve. Uh, 17-22 modification. I'll second. 53 all cups. All right, so motion to to administratively approved made by Jerry, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. At least I've said it as own board. Let's throw some axes. We can change that, yeah. <laughs> All right, so up next we have reorganizing the board. So this is done once a year. We reorganize uh, the officers. We have a suggestion from staff, yep. which is where you have one more full voting member who will be at some point added to the board as well as an associate. Do you want to wait until you have a full composition? So I was actually going to bring that up, and that's a good segue to one of at least a couple of my questions with the open seats that we do have. Has anything been noticed? Do we have any communication from town manager's offices to I, there may be hearings or yeah I I have not followed up to hear if they have placed an ad I would assume they have but I will follow up on that but I think for the listening audience um, you know certainly people are interested in applying to Richard participate Mark. with the zoning Come board <laughs> yeah. two wonderful positions. wonderful group that uh, yeah and that, I think that way is at least where you have full voting members, you would want to have them all participate in the vote for officers. So I guess I'd recommend that you defer that briefly. I think that's a good idea. You know, Albeit we'll, we'll you may about. want to appoint people in the interim to yeah, jobs. I just I, I see the clerk's position being appointed on a nightly basis. If, if there's going to be an ask at the next meeting to clerk, just can I have it it's now nice so to I can have, make sure yes. I can come in and yes. get everything yes. lined up yeah. a little bit more yeah. organized than I was tonight? Right. Are so. there any upcoming, well, you're still on the board, upcoming meetings of the planning board, remember the, uh, they're going through changes? On the, Do, on the recodification committee? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I'm I'm not on the board. No, I think Scott there is. There is a meeting next week. Sorry, I thought you were pointing to me. No. Scott? Any updates? Uh, no, <laughs> no range been closer. Uh, thank goodness. No, no, that keep, you can attend because Bob's yeah. not here. He was attending yes. routinely. Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah. So that's ongoing. Yeah. All right. Anything else for board updates? Then? We did circulate to the board the newest information from the EPA. Um, they are very interested in nitrogen levels on the yes. Cape. Um, 
they are very interested in doing something significant regarding the nitrogen levels. So right now, the Board of Health and Wastewater are working with the EPA. They're expecting to have a meeting top of July to look at what they're recommending. Um, Wastewater Super will tell you that the EPA would probably be thrilled if the entire town of Falmouth was sewered because that would eliminate their nitrogen issue. It's obviously not a possible solution. So there's a lot that the town's going to have to work on for that. But I understand that there's some five-year period that they're looking at, whereas you would complete a planning process with full implementation within 20 years. That might be difficult to meet, but time will tell. So I think that sort of puts the board on notice, and maybe it will be helpful as we get further direction on how to manage applications that have nitrogen impacts. Very well, sir. I think they're going to issue a five-year watershed permit, which is unheard of. Usually the, the permits are less than that, I think, on a watershed basis. Right. I think, you know, certainly the issue for Falmouth is... Oh, so there's 10-year. I forget. It was no, very No, long. no, five. But, oh, okay. you know, most of Falmouth is technically in a watershed area, so most all the properties will be affected. <coughs> Thanks for the update, Marie. Anything else? Board discussion? <coughs> Future agenda items? All right. Nope. nope. All right. Our next meeting is here at Falmouth Town Hall, July 28th at 6.30. <coughs> meeting adjourned. July 28th.